Hi, I'm Family Command. Welcome to the second episode of Obsolete. If you haven't seen the show, I advise you to go check out the first episode to get a good feel for it. Um, it's basically a show about old technology, showing what it can do, making it do new things, and maybe mixing in you know some newer stuff, uh, some reviews eventually, showcases, stuff like that. Now, I got a lot of feedback on the first episode. Most of it was positive. I realized I have to work on some of the camera work. The editing is a little shaky. I didn't really have everything exactly as I wanted it, but I was very eager to get something out. So I hope that the second episode is a lot better than the first episode production-wise. Um, but I did get lots and lots of very good feedback, and I hope to keep seeing that. But still, if you don't didn't like anything about the first episode, you don't like something about this episode, then you can always hit me up. I'll have links on how to do that in the credits. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to lead into the first segment, which is tone dialers and a little bit of red boxing. Now what you see in front of you here are pocket tone dialers. These use DTMF, which is known as dual tone multi-frequency. Um, if you look inside here and even on here there's a dial here which uses buttons now that's opposed to this rotary phone dial which just has a spin so you would dial by spinning this knob kind of thing right here and so the main difference between that is that this phone uses pulse dialing now pulse dialing is just done by you switching the telephone line on and off using a series depending on which number you dialed, and that would make your number. DTMF came in in about, I think it's 1963 or 1964 as a way to replace this, because um, pulse dialing was subject to a number of problems, for example, if you're going, like, switching centers and long distance and stuff, there was problems if you need to get, like, a country code or something. And I also believe that pulse dialing degraded as it was going down the line, so that you may not get the number that you wanted depending on where you were. So with DTMF every number on the keypad here is made out of two tones and they're played together. There's a total of eight tones that are used and you can look up there's a grid that has all of the like the different hertz of the tones and which ones are played together and that's how that's done. Now if you look at the dialers here this is an early Radio Shack dialer. I've actually not found any documentation on these. Um, this model is 43140, and as you can see, it was made in August of '83. It's engraved right there. And um, this uses watch batteries. The newer models that everybody's talking about with red boxing, those use triple A's. They're slightly smaller. And I'll be talking a bit about red boxing later. But so you can see from the keypad here. There's a pause button, a dial button, manual to memory switch, an enter and store. It's for storing numbers. If you look here, it's a 32 memory pocket tone dial, which means it can store numbers. I have been unable to figure out how to store numbers on this. Um, I haven't found any documentation, so I'm not sure how to do that. And then on here, there's also a dial button on the side. So you can just click it. And then this is the part that you put on the phone. I'll be showing that in a bit later. And then, uh, as you can see from the top here, there's um, an eighth inch jack. I'm not sure why that's there. Someone before me who had this put that in there. It's not a standard feature. I'm not sure what they were using it for. If you can think of what they were using it for, you can drop me a line on that. But I'm not sure. I'll be showing you what I'm going to use it for in a bit later. But anyway, opening this up, see the circuit board here. So here's the speaker. You have battery compartment here. This board just does from the dial on the front, and this is the main circuit board here. If you look at the board, there's some interesting wiring done, like with this wire here, and there's some desoldering done here. I think someone who had this before me might have been doing something to it, I'm not sure. Still works as a dialer, but there might be something changed on it. Somebody might have improved the design. And um, with red boxing, there would be a crystal on this board. I'm not sure if this board even has the crystal that's done be changed with red boxing, but um, you would take the crystal and you would add a 6.55 megahertz crystal and you switch them out and then that would be able to allow you to produce 
tones you would need that could simulate coin tones. And I'll be talking more about red boxing in a little bit. So here's the board. Put that right away. But um, flip the cover up here. And you have your keypad, and you can dial any phone number, so I'll just... That's just a random phone number. Don't try calling it. And um, you could he probably hear the beeping that was made during that. If you actually have this tone dialer up against the phone, up against the headset, when you're dialing that, that sound will actually turn the phone off for some reason. So if you're going to dial a number using this type of tone dialer, do it before you have it held up to the phone. But then after I have that number in there, which is just dialed, I can hit the dial button here. And it plays it, or it can also hit the one on the side. It does the same number. Let me show you. I have my trusty Radio Shack mini amplifier here, which I've used before. I also have this eighth inch to eight inch cord. I'll put that in the jack of the tone dialer. Put the other end into my amplifier. Now using this, it gets kind of picky on what volume it has to be, or else it sounds awful, so I'll just go little by little. Right there. Hear that again? If I'm making your ears bleed because of that, I'm sorry. It's very finicky. I'm guessing that's one of the reasons that there could be a jack on top of here, I'm not sure yet. I have this other model of tone dialer over here. Now this is a port to touch 2 tone dialer, somebody trademarked tone dialer, you can see in the corner there. This has your standard like clicky buttons. And if you look down at the bottom here, there's an interesting indentation, which makes me think that originally there's going to be something else there. I'm not sure what would have been there, but the case makes it look like they're going to add something. On the back here, there's no label, there's nothing. I can't tell who made this, when they made it. I'm not entirely sure. I'll open it up. You can see the circuits here. You have the speaker, batteries, and then your PCB. It looks a lot simpler than the other one, so it might have come before it. And then you have the switch on the side right here. This does your volume, so if I put it up one, you probably can't hear that. Put it up another one, it's slightly louder. I'll show you that in a second right here. I have my telephone pickup, which I've showed before. You can just plop that on top. It promptly falls off. It's not very adhesive, that plastic. Then I have my mini amplifier speaker again. And I'll turn that on. Hear a little bit of the buzz. And then... Turn it off. Turn it on. You can hear that. Now I'm going to be demonstrating how to use this use this tone dialer with this rotary phone as opposed to using the rotary dial. I'm going to be hooking it up to this amplifier so you can hear it. I'm going to make sure it's a good volume. Right, you can hear that dial tone. All right.